Dr. Brown, are you yourself a starseed? Yes. How do you know this? Well, I've been told it by the star visitors. I've had the dousing rods run on me. I've taken the star kid starseed identification questionnaire with a score that says so. What was your score? Oh, um, I think low 20s. That's pretty good. But I'm, I'm old school. Yeah. Uh, they, they've improved the recipe since they did me back in 1939. You would hope they get better at it over the next six, I took, 60, I took your test. Years. I scored a 38. Yeah, see? Case in point. Um, I, I'm what they call the Model T model of star seed. You know, there's a little rust in the gears, but it still goes down the road. Are you jealous the, of guys the, like me? Somewhat, but even more the star kids who blow you out of the water. Oh, These little punks now, that. they're like a Maserati race car. I'll kick their asses. Uh, oh, if you can get through the force field. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Boylan. Hi, Martin. How are you? Great. So you've written in one of your many self-published books, quote, the saga of star visitors' contacts with humankind is the greatest unpublished headline of the millennium and the most important missing fact in our history books. The most important. That's right. More so than the cracking of the Liberty Bell, the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand, the death of Anna Nicole Smith. Yeah. Compared to those modest events, I mean, the, the star visitors and their interaction with humankind is the underpinnings of the human race. It's why we exist. It represents a lot of jump starts in moving us ahead in our cultural and societal evolution. And now for the generation that you and I are embedded in, uh, is the time when they've determined that the human race has grown up enough for them to come back and begin cosmic dialogue without us falling down worshiping them or running away thinking, you know, they're uh, ghosts. And uh, in the case of Earth, uh, there's currently over 1,400 races that are uh, studying us, uh, trying to make interventions and uh, help us get over a very tough point in our 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 evolution as a race. We're kind of a mess right now. We're at a critical point. So why do they care? Why do they want to help us? Why aren't they just laughing at us? Because we're an intelligent species. We are spiritual beings. We have intrinsic value and worth in the eyes of God, if you will, and in their eyes. And, uh, you know, uh, just like you don't run over a beggar on the road that is shuffling along by the side of the highway, you don't just... Uh, I have. Let a race. <sighs> <laughs> Let's talk about these 1,400, and I know there's more than 1,400 star visitors, star beings. Let's, let's talk about some of the most popular ones, the ones that visit us here on Earth. Okay. Uh, the most frequent visitors probably would be the Zetas. Uh, These are what some people call the greys. Some people call them the greys. The large heads, the large dark sloping eyes. Uh, the Steven Spielberg Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, which is a bad copy of a Zeta but close enough for government work. There's uh, Pleiadians who look absolutely human. Mm -hmm. uh, there's several other human looking races, Altarians, and uh, there's uh, a race that is very tall, spiritual, angular in body that look uh, like a human version of a praying mantis. Very uh, uh, arms and legs with that crook uh, look we associate with the insect on Earth. There's a group that... Uh, wait, 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 it's a praying mantis race? Mm -hmm. Right. Do they... So they bite off their lovers' heads after no, they, no. they fuck. No, that, no. That's that's the uh, insect. But, okay. uh, this that's would good. be this would be the the folk, <laughs> the folk. And they're peaceful. Yes, very highly developed, very spiritual folks. Uh, mm -hmm. 
there is a race that uh, e evolved from the reptilian phylum, reptoids we call them, uh, look like sort of a mock dragon. Uh, now, and these reptoids, they're, they have the reputation of being kind of a group of interstellar pricks. They're, they're, they're mean. No, that's the disinformation propaganda from the UFO cover-up folks. They want to get people frightened at this or that. Now, what are, what are they, they like, the reptoids? They're intelligent, uh, peaceful people. Uh, they're part of the group that are trying to do some good here. I, there's, there's also a race called the Tall White Men, right? Uh, well, these are the Tall Whites. They, tall whites. They, they are resident on Earth and have been since we came west on covered wagons. You put a, put a goatee on him, you got Justin Timberlake. Uh, well, not with the eyes, unless he yeah. uses an awful lot of eyeliner, which I don't think Justin's gotten to yet. So. <laughs> the Tall Whites trying to bring sexy back? Don't know. <laughs> I doubt. Well, they, they reproduce themselves, so. Do, uh, do alien races eat at Taco Bell? Yes. So you, you mentioned that there's, there's people in the government trying to underhandedly foil all of this, but are there people in the government who are themselves star seeds, star visitors? Absolutely. Let's name names. Can't do that. Why? Well, I don't know who most of them are, and uh, one in particular who's in the White House uh, said, please don't mention my name. Dick Cheney? No. George no. Bush? No. Condi? N well, she's a starseed, but that's... Condi's a starseed? Yes, I've checked out her energy signature and it's consistent. Okay, Bono. You say Bono is a starseed. Take it to the bank. I mean, you can sort of tell with those alien-like goggles he wears. How about his behavior? Trying to save the world single-handedly? That's what a star... That's a starseed stuff, you know. There, some others doing that too, and that's one mm -hmm. of the reasons we haven't gotten to hell in a handbag yet. So Bono, he's one of the good guys. You bet it. All right. You betcha. Russell Crowe, he's got to be a reptoid. I don't know about that, but he is a star seed. What good has he done? He throws phones at the help. Yeah. Not all, just being a star seed doesn't mean you're going to be exemplary in all your behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have free will and you can get out of control. Ellen. Degenerous? Yes. You bet. And I would argue she's, her behavior also says she's trying to do some good and get some understanding going in a tough world. She's wonderful. No argument here. Do you watch her show? Sometimes. It's yeah. great. Yeah. I love the way she dances. And her, and her comedy is peerless. Yeah, she's hilarious. She's hilarious. I love Ellen. I'm really glad that and she's, she's part of she's brave as hell. She is. Let's give her one. Yeah, all right. And finally, Oprah Winfrey. Is there any doubt? Not in my mind. She, she's a you know, one-woman crusade. Yeah. You know, again, the be you, I didn't you have to do the rods, although I did. You know, her behavior signature just tells you. So, it, it's more than just, though, being good and trying to help out the world. It's actually, these people have a genetic makeup. That is that a is little from, different than the USDA regular human. And it's, it's, it's genetic, it's literally like DNA from an alien life form or an alien race that has somehow entered spliced, into their gene body. spliced into their parents' reproductive material, egg or sperm. Well, that's one of the main ways star kids and star seeds happen. The other way... So it, like it, Oprah's mom was raped by an alien kind no, of thing? No, 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 no. There's no rape involved, no intercourse involved. You know, just like gene splicing, you know, the doctor doesn't uh, have relations with the uh, patient who's getting gene splicing, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's all test tubey. Um, How about Marv Albert? Don't know the person. Ba basketball commentator. No, don't, no, sorry. No. So can you tell just by looking at me whether or not I am in fact a star kid? Well, you look over 18, so I would guess you star might be a star seed adult. Um, just by looking at you, no. From your behavior, so I can kind of guess it because the average USDA human would not be doing an interview on star seeds. 
they'd make this stuff a pile of crap or for Looney Tunes, and they wouldn't be moving their career in those directions. They'd be picking safer bets. Mm -hmm. The people that either this thing lights up their board or who realize this is an important truth and you know they, they see their job is to get important truths out there no matter at what cost uh, stick their nose in this business so the fact you've done that stick your nose in the business gives me a kind of quick behavioral profile indication that you probably are we'll find out in a little bit that i rub the dousing rods on you we'll have it visibly and unquestionably you grew up in the counterculture correct uh, yeah, I did my time in there, you bet. How much acid did you do? Oh, probably 30 trips. All right, I think we've gotten to the bottom of all this. It's all... I think we figured out what's going on here, Dr. Boyer. It's a flashback, huh? <laughs> and in mere seconds, we will know definitively whether I am, in fact, a starseed. Uh, so we're, we're going along here and your electromagnetic field is radiating outward and when we reach the boundary these rods will splay of their own as, as you see them doing at this point. Now this is not 12 inches. Uh, this looks to be about 8 feet maybe. Okay, so that's not 1 foot, it's 8 feet. So you're a star seed, you're not a regular human. I'm a star seed! I'm a star kid now. Everything is so pixelated and tactile. Martin. Who's that? It's Russell Crowe, mate. Russell Crowe? The unpredictable and often dangerous actor? Well, why are you wearing a dress, mate? It's not a dress, it's a moon poncho, Russell. Ow! You threw a shoe at me! Get back to web drifting, you asshole. Right, I'm going. Well, Dr. Boylan, this has been a most enlightening experience. I'm going to drive home that highway feeling much more better about myself now knowing that I am, in fact, not just a great human, but a star seed. Okay. A great man in the universe. But behave. Don't, don't use your powers to knock any cars off the freeway. I'm going to abuse the shit out no, of my no, power. No, 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 no. Can't do that. Hey Web Drifters, if you like this show, you'll love Geek Entertainment TV, starring Irina Slutsky. Take a look. Warning, here are a few good reasons why geeks should never leave the house. Do the guy's ego scale as much as Ruby? <laughs> you kind of have carpal tunnel syndrome and all that. Uh, and just, Typing on the computer? On the mallet. This is the Chakratron. Kid, I heard a rumor. I heard that you're gay. A few good reasons why geeks shouldn't play video games. But the man cannon. Tell me about the man cannon. The man cannon? Did you make this button? A few good reasons why geeks shouldn't go to conferences. How medically safe is a dirty Sanchez? I wouldn't advise it. So have you ever made out with Richard Stallman? Yeah. Oh wait, Twitter Dildonics. What's your safety word? <laughs> Linux, I hardly ever say it. How big is your stack? This big. A few reasons why geeks shouldn't wait in line. So how much did you pay for that? 500 plus tax. Let me see the receipt. Huh? My friend got it. Why are you wearing such an evil shirt? Because I'm evil. And you made my boobs famous? Geek Entertainment TV cannot be held liable for adverse reactions as a result of watching the show. Itching, scratching, redness, rashes, swelling, and a new third nipple. Don't blame us. GeekEntertainment.tv